Today's game has been one of the ones that I've been excited to get going for quite some time. X-Men for PS1, the same game as the X-Men 64 prototype I shared a while back, but in this case further along, was in development by Cyrox in 1998 and 1999. While one could point to the Mutant Academy game released in 2000 and say they are the same game, as I've started to learn, that just isn't the case. While Paradox Development did indeed put out their X-Men fighting game, it used an entirely different engine, that of the cancelled Thrill Kill game, and it seems quite different. Thus, we can conclude that despite some similarities, this version of X-Men is unreleased. What has been challenging is that many of the builds that were made for it that I've recovered are designed for use with the PlayStation Development Kit. No, not the green or blue ones you see often, which are debug kits, but rather development cards that go in a PC. I've had all the cards required for quite some time, but it seems that a fuse are too blue, meaning I can't get steady sync out of the card, so no running the game. By some luck, as I was digging into over 40 prototypes of Asteroids for the Game Boy Color, I saw one zip file that seemed to contain a demo build from July 1999. The game was not in a usable form though, as a zip file won't help us get it onto the console. But I did use a PS1 disk creator tool, booted up my favorite emulators, and then... nothing. Black screen. In fact, this felt familiar, so I have a feeling that I actually discovered this build a while ago but gave up. For the heck of it though, I decided to burn the image onto one of my CDRs despite my supply dwindling. I put it in the console and let it do its thing. And then something happened that I wasn't expecting. It booted. Defying all expectations, the disc actually loaded. Now it is very much as listed, a demo build. It doesn't include all the characters, and in fact I would go on to find source code for the full version packaged on the same day that I've yet to compile, but it did prove that I had something working, and more importantly, not to trust the emulators I was using. So what is in the demo build? Well, there are two characters to choose from, Wolverine and Apocalypse, and a few levels to go with it. Getting in-game, it's clear that the AI is essentially non-existent. Occasionally, it'll do some basic moves, but as of right now, it's hard to say if the AI simply wasn't developed, or if there was a bug or some other reason for it not doing much. Diving just a little deeper by choosing two of the same character to fight, and I was surprised to see alternate costumes that not only change a character's appearance, but also their name, as Wolverine became Logan. And Apocalypse becomes En Saba Nur, going back to the character's origins. It's hard to get a good feel for how the game would have played, especially with no one to play against, but it does seem to have what you'd expect from a licensed fighting game of the era. Some basic punches and kicks, and some combos and special moves that help you chain all that together. You did have some basic 3D movement though, which was nice. I did do another quick search for any more zip files that might contain builds, and did find another. This one from 1998. It's a fairly basic skin test, but the work in progress icon does show up in magazine previews for the game. Compared to the July 1999 build, which seemed to have a pretty nice frame rate, the frame rate of this 1998 build is not good. But that's game development. Now this video was just meant to be a first glance into Cyrox's X-Men game. I have many other pieces of their history yet to uncover, including more X-Men, but I had to share this breakthrough. It still isn't clear what happened with the X-Men game, but Cyrox Developments itself was eventually acquired by Climax. There is still a company called Cyrox Events in the UK that points to their history as a game development studio, but it is focused more on e-commerce solutions today. Julian Wood, who had founded the company along with Dominic Wood, seems to have started using the Cyrox name in the early 2000s once again. I'm sure I'll find out some more soon, but until next time, follow me on Twitter at Borman18, and thanks for watching.